Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with the mid-year book freakout tag 2019 edition. Um, I think I did this last year so this is kind of fun. I don't know if these are new questions. I've seen this like everybody did this at the end of June. I am of course behind the behind the times but but to be fair this is the mid-year book freakout tag. So in my opinion, it should be done like the first week of July or second week of July because you haven't hit mid-year yet. You hit mid-year on July the 1st, sort of, kind of. Um, so yeah, so that's why, that's my reason why I decided to do it now. Um, but anyway, I was not tagged by anybody in this. It's kind of one of those, just do it if you want to. So there are 15 questions here, so let's jump in and get started. The first question is, best book you've read so far in 2019? And that would be There's Something About Sweetie by Sandia Menon. Um, this book was adorable. It was a YA novel. I absolutely loved it. I am in love with this author. I thought this story was absolutely spectacular. Um, our main character, Sweetie, was just adorable. And I think she was very relatable to, to young girls. No matter when you were a young girl, um, you know, dealing with boys and with pressure from parents and school and all those things. And yeah, this was just a great novel. And I realized when I was looking to answer these questions, like I wrote everything down beforehand, was that I've only given five books five stars so far this year, up until July 1st. Um, I did finish a book on July 1st that did get five stars, but if you're talking about the first book, the first half of the year, only five books have rated five stars for me, and this was one of them, and I loved it. Um, the next one, best sequel you've read so far this year. That would be The Mistress by Susan Wakes, book number two in the Chicago Fire trilogy. I, I wax poetic about this series. I love it so, so much. This trilogy, I should say, it's only three books. Um, it is a, um, a historical romance series that does not take place in Regency England. It takes place in Chicago during the, uh, just after the Great Chicago Fire, I think in 1871. And this one is about a woman who um, is friends with those of the higher uh, aristocracy uh, in, in Chicago at the time or the, the, you know, the, the well-to-do, if you will. And she is a lady's maid um, for the character in the first story. And in this one is her story. And she dresses up to try and sneak into a party as somebody of a much higher class. And then the fire breaks out and she's separated from her friends and she meets up with this guy and the story goes from there. These are so well-researched, so well done. I really, really loved it. Um, number three, a new release you haven't read, but you want to. So this book came out in May or June, and that is The the Unhoneymooners by Christina Loring. I'm actually going to be reading this book in July. I cannot wait. I have heard such good things about this story. I had this on my anticipated reads list for either May or June. I can't remember what month. And yeah, this is going to be so, so good, and I cannot wait to read it. Um, most anticipated forthcoming releases, so books that haven't come out yet. I've got two of them here I want to mention for you guys. The first one is Life and Other Inconveniences by Kristen Higgins. This one comes out on August the 6th. Any new Kristen Higgins is a definite must read for me. I am such a fan of her work and I love her work and I cannot wait to read this one. And the other one is A Wedding in December by Sarah Morgan. Again, Sarah Morgan is another auto buy author for me. I love her work. I saw this one was coming out about a month ago and I got super excited. So yes, I cannot wait to read either one of these books. Biggest reading disappointment, uh, question number five. Biggest reading disappointment of the year so far. Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. You guys know about two weeks ago, I did a 10 minute rant on how horrible this book was. If you're interested, I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Um, I hated that book, absolutely hated that book. I, I shouldn't really say it was a disappointment. I wasn't expecting a lot going into it, but to absolutely, there are books that you don't like. Yeah, okay, I didn't like this book. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like this. But to actually despise a book and tell people that maybe they shouldn't try it because it was that bad um, is a big deal to me. And this book I really, really did not like. Um, uh, number six, biggest surprise. Now, this one was kind of a hard one for me because I'm trying to think of, like, was there a book that I was surprised by? But not necessarily. Um, but the book that I picked is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. Now this one I read for NetGalley as an ARC. And I, I clicked on and requested it because it sounded interesting. Um, I do love historical fiction. 
and I was just surprised on how much I actually did enjoy it. You know, most historical fiction, if I like it, you'll get a three and a half, four, four and a half star from me. But again, I've only given five books five stars so far this year. So for me to give this one a five star, you know I loved it. So it was, it's based on true events about these women in Kentucky who would be like bookmobile women without a mobile. Um, you know, they would do it on horseback or on donkey or whatever. And they would go up into the, into the, into the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky and they would deliver books to people and pick up books and, and be exactly like a bookmobile. And, but our main character in this story was a little special because she has a condition that causes her skin to look blue and how she was segregated and how she, she lived being a person of color in a society in Kentucky in the 1930s. And it was so, so good. And I encourage a lot of people to read it. I absolutely loved it. Um, so it was a surprise on how much I actually did like it. Uh, number seven, your favorite debut work so far this year. I had to look this up because I wasn't sure which books were debuts from authors. So I obviously looked at only at books that I was not absolutely familiar with the author. And I did come across one and I was so thrilled. I think this one got a four or a four and a half star from me. And this was Appetites and Vices by Felicia Grossman. This is her debut novel. It is a historical romance novel set in... Gilded Age New York, I think. Um, but what I loved about this one is our main female lead is Jewish. I thought that was spectacular. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. This book gets very, very hot and spicy, so do keep that in mind. But, you know, both her and the main character are dealing with different ways to kind of get away from their family or to try and make their family think about them differently. And they kind of work together and, of course, end up falling in love. It was so, so good. Her second book in the series, this is book one in the Truett series. The second book comes out August or September. I do have an advanced copy from NetGalley to read, and I cannot wait. It's going to be so good. Um, the next one, uh, category number eight, newest fictional crush. I don't get crushes on fictional characters, I'm sorry. So next question. Um, newest favorite fictional character. I really don't have an answer for that. I think... I read a lot of books, you guys. You guys know this. At the time of me filming this, I have finished 188 books this year. So for me to go after one specific character is kind of difficult for me. Um, so I really can't answer that one. Um, category number 10. A book that made you cry. Now, I am a very, very sensitive person. Um, there are books that I can recall crying in. I cried while reading um, The Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. I cried while reading, um, oh, it was a Kristen Higgins novel, the one where she had to put down her dog. Anything involving animals will make me cry. Um, don't ask me to watch The Incredible Journey because even though I know all the animals turn up fine when that cat goes over the waterfall, I am crying waterfalls. Um, <laughs> but I cannot recall a book this year that actually made me cry. Um, so I just don't think I've hit one yet that has made me that emotional. Um, Number 11, a book that has made you happy. Pretty much every book that I read makes me happy, so I really don't know how to answer that one either. Um, number 12, I'm not doing so well on these next questions, you guys. Um, favorite book to film adaptation so far? I'm not a movie watcher. I The last movie that I watched in theaters, Garrett and I went to go see Bohe Bohemian Rhapsody, and that was what, Garrett, the tail end of last year? Um, we don't generally go to the movies. I'm not a big movie person. Um, but I did read The Help earlier this year, and I can tell you the movie for that book is fabulous. If you have read the book but not seen the movie, I highly encourage you to watch the movie, or vice versa. If you've only seen the movie, read the book. So super good. Um, number 13, this originally said favorite review that you've written this year, but because I don't generally write reviews, I decided to change it to favorite video I've, I've recorded and uploaded this year. So... I would have to say, I don't have a specific favorite necessarily, but I love the fact, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, you guys, that I review every book I read. As I just said, I've read 180 books to date, and I have reviewed every single book, whether it be a one-minute review in a video or a 10-minute rant on a book. I have reviewed every book that I've read, and I am extremely proud of that fact. Um, that I do and I'm, I'm, I'm diligent and I do those weekly review videos and I love doing them because I know that you guys really enjoy watching them 
And, you know, I hope that you guys are taking something away from them and I hope that you guys are enjoying them. But I think if I'm going to take the time to read this book that this author has taken their time to write, I can then take the time to sit and give you guys a review and let you know what I think about it. So I'm pretty proud of those. And if you want to talk about my most fun video that I filmed this year, it would have to be the one when I went down to Boston and I got to film a mail, uh, uh, not a mail haul, a, well, the mail haul was fun too. But when I got to film a, um, a book haul with Frida, that was, I mean, Frida, she's awesome. Great, great co-host. I mean, she's just, she's all kinds of adorable. And Steve was there too. And that was pretty awesome too. <laughs> so yeah, no, in, in all actuality, if you're going by pure enjoyment, I love that. I, I, that was probably the highlight of the first half of this year for me was getting to go down and meet another booktuber. I thought that that was so much fun and I'm, I, it's too bad that I'm going to be down in new, in, not really in New England. I'll be in West, I'll be in New York state, um, at the end of October, but I'll be nowhere near Boston because I was going to go and want to go book shopping. <laughs> My treat this time. Um, but yeah, so anyway, absolutely fun. I love that video. I will leave it linked in the description box below. I'll leave both my video, which was the book haul, and Steve's video, which was the mail, um, mail haul, um, like his unwrapping mail thing that he does. Um, I'll leave both those videos down below if you guys are interested in seeing them. Um, do to do to do. Number 14, most beautiful book you've acquired this year. I have two. One of them I've already held up, and that was the Unhoney Unhoneymooters by Christina Lauren. This book is just gorgeous. The other one is I, one I picked up quite recently, so you're getting a kind of a, um, a prequel to my June book haul. Yeah, my June book haul is coming up in like a week or so, guys. I'll get to it, I promise. Is Pride and Prejudice and Other Flavors by Sonolia Dev. I love the cover on this one. I think it's awesome. And from my understanding is this is a retelling of, um, of Pride and Prejudice. And now that I've read Pride and Prejudice, I will totally appreciate this book all the more. But yeah, I, I love the cover and I cannot wait to get to this one. And the spines on these ones are super pretty too, aren't they? Aren't they going to look awesome on a bookshelf? Um, and number 15, which books do you need to read before the end of the year? All of them is the answer. <laughs> I've got no specific books that I need to read other than the books that I got from NetGalley for review. I mentioned that other one by Felicia Grossman. Um, you know, I, I would like to read the new Kristen Higgins by the end of the year. I'd like to read the new Sarah Morgan before the end of the year. I'm pretty sure that that A Wedding in December book by Sarah Morgan is a Christmas book, so I might have to get it and read it during the holidays. But yeah, I, I want to read all the books and I, you know, I, I, I love it. So yeah. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this tag. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please let me know in the comments below any of the books that I've mentioned. Have you read them? What did you think about them? And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so very much for watching. Bye, guys.